Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last session of our amazing Middle Grade Magic 2023. My name is Ashley Williams, and I'm the editor of Chapter Books and Middle Grade here at SLJ. I'll be moderating our closing keynote, but first I'd like to thank the many sponsors who helped make today possible. I hope you all had a chance to visit the booths in the exhibit hall for downloads and resources. And if not, the entire event will be available on demand for three months. Uh, so I'm so excited to welcome Tilly Walden, Tegan Quinn, and Sarah Quinn, creators of Tegan and Sarah Junior High. Set in the present day, this inspiring, lightly fictionalized autobiography with artwork by Tilly Walden offers a glimpse at Tegan and Sarah before they became icons, exploring their shifting sisterhood, their own experiences coming out, and the first steps of their musical journey. Uh, so Tilly, Tegan, and Sarah, thank you so much for coming and welcome. Um, I know you all have so much to talk about. I thought I would just get, uh, get the ball rolling. So how did this idea blossom? And I'd love to know more about how Tilly got involved and just how everything started. Um, well, very excited to be here. And I love this first question. I haven't thought about this in a while, but um, in 2018, Sarah and I wrote a memoir called High School. Um, and when we uh, went out and shop, shopped it, um, we ended up uh, doing the deal with Macmillan and FSG. And, um, and they had this amazing um, idea that in addition to our memoir about high school, that we would also write something for the middle grade kind of space. Um, so when we were finished writing our book, we put together a pitch deck for what we thought we would present as the idea for the graphic novel, but we made it completely based in reality. Um, so it was, I, I kind of did a pitch deck about our actual junior high slash middle grade experience. And um, they were like, no, that's <laughs> too scary. Um, you know, cause when we went to- <laughs> Too real. Way too real. <laughs> like, no, 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 fictionalize it and maybe set it in, in um, in the current time. So, which was thrilling for Sarah and I, cause we'd never written um, fiction before. And so that's the book is definitely, it's peppered with real experiences we had when we were in grade seven and our own life, of course, but um, it gave us the opportunity to really play with the time frame, you know, and, and to add in things that didn't happen yet. Like for example, starting a band, we didn't do that until we were 15, but we, we got to move that forward, which was really exciting. So, but yeah, I'm still giggling in my head about the the pitch deck where it was like, you know, we get to grade seven and everyone's smoking and wearing makeup and stealing. And they were like, no, 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 no that cannot be in the book. <laughs> I never got to see that version. I think I only ever, once I got involved, saw the like the fictionalized and, and more modern version. Um, I'm going to send it to you, Tilly, because you'll really laugh because it's kind of scary. I just like clearly we didn't understand the instructions. Secret side graphic novel. <laughs> um, the adult. It, I, I always wondered as I was drawing the book, I, me, me coming on board was just the matter of like getting an email. I guess it was, was it 2018 that this all was really coming together? Yeah, it was, was it, a while ago. A long time ago, because even for, I think because our memoir happened so quickly and then actually the adaptation from the memoir to a TV show was also really quick. And this has, this has been such an, a uh, such a labor of love. I mean, more on your part than ours, Tilly, but I just, I mean, yeah. I just have like so much gratitude and I'm sort of in awe of the work that you did on this book. And we are, yeah. so. I just was saying last night to my partner as all, as we're approaching the release, I'm so glad you said yes to do this because <laughs> yeah. I look, I look at the book and Wasn't I'm just- Wasn't Tilly our only, that was the only, like the on, only person we, like when we were yeah. asked, we were yeah. like, we want Kelly Walden and then we were like she's not gonna say yes <laughs> I mean I was like it's written by you two I had at that point I had never done any middle grade and this is still my first the first middle grade graphic novel I've ever done and it's kind of the most cartoony book I've ever done it's the most silly book I've ever done and <laughs> I, yeah, I have no regrets. It has been, it has been so much fun. It was such a fast yes. And it's, it's two books. So this is junior high coming out now. And then we're currently working on, on the next one. Um, I should probably do that after I get off this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wondered, it was so fun to draw you guys as kids. And I feel like 
you made it really clear in your writing what each of your personalities were. Um, but I did wonder what the challenge was like maybe when it came to putting it in modern times, because like it's still Calgary. And I'm guessing like that's still your mom. That's still your stepdad, still your dad. But like were the friends different or I don't know what I'm curious just about fictionalizing. I, think I mean, I think with the original when Sarah and I first started writing, we stuck really to to reality mm -hmm. and then as we got into our second draft that's when Sarah and I had a conversation where we were like we really wanted to because it's said in modern times we wanted to uh, really fictionalize the group of friends more but but all the characters are based on people we actually knew and were friends with and and so you know they're really fictionalized in the sense that like you know their names have been changed and and they're you know um you know multiple characters like in one in one person yes. but yeah but like there's, a, there's like a lot of I think there was a lot of blending of characters which in some ways we actually learned you know to do as we were writing our own memoir you know we would deliver these right. sort of Moby Dick size um drafts manuscripts to our um to our our, our editor and they would just be like oh my god this is not going to be a 700 page book you've got to cut down some of these characters so with the with the with the sort of script book part of um junior high we were better at that like we and actually some of the first early readers that we shared um you know like our our sort of portion of the of the writing with right away they were like there's just too many mean kids like we had you know, like there was there was actually more of them and they were just like yeah we probably we get it like you could probably just have like one mean person and we would get it you don't need like a gang of them so you know even that like I think Tegan and I we just always had such a large social network at, yeah. you know in our world and so even to us cutting it down you know drastically it's like oh yeah right there's just too many characters to keep it straight so um but yeah a lot of the a lot Hilly, of like did you feel like obviously this was the first time we had written a graphic novel so we didn't know you write it in script form so it was like the first day we were like both googling like how do you write a graphic novel oh a script okay next how do you write a script so did you i'm wondering what it was like for you to like take take our script and like see how many characters we had like did we do an okay job describe i mean based you on the illustration, great job it seems like it was okay it was so clear like we really took our idea and just understood it but like was it hard yeah. were you like you know you know making a graphic novel is so labor intensive i teach comics and i constantly want to say to them like why don't you guys just go be accountants why do you want to do this no i love <laughs> comics i really do love comics but they take a lot out of you and having to write and draw makes the process so exhausting so actually having the script and the whole story just handed to me every character fleshed out the whole story fleshed out the dialogue is already written so in that sense it was like one of the most it was like taking a bubble bath it was like the most relaxed <laughs> Experience to just be like, well, I'm just going to copy. I'm going to take what's here and put it on the page. I will say that comics to fit everything you need to fit into comics, like one page of script is probably equal sometimes to like three pages of comics. Oh, wow. And in order to make, but it depends, right? But I didn't want the book to be 700 pages. I've done that before though in the past. Um, and so my challenge was like trying to take every morsel of what you wrote and cramming it in in like every space. And one of the reasons I decided to have the book have no panel borders was so like there's no boxes around anything was to kind of capture this kind of like what you're saying, this expansiveness, this chaos of being young, all the people, you know, so much going on all the time. And I really wanted the book to feel kind of like vibrant and explosive in that mm -hmm. sense. Is that's now so cool. I didn't know that like that's so interesting because I don't know I mean I read a lot of graphic novels but I it's like so interesting to hear about your process and to understand like because it the, my partner right now Sophia is reading the like graphic novel for the first time and like, I can't wait. like laughing and weeping <laughs> like she really wanted to wait and she's been reading it and, and constantly is waking me up and showing me pages and one of the things she loves so much is is those like panelists, like those pages that are just so full and there's so many interesting things that you've drawn in there. And like, it does show the chaos of the friends and our, you know, energy and all this stuff. And I just, I would have never known that that was a choice you made because of how much is in the book. And that's so cool. You're a genius. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is Rebecca suggesting that now would be a good time to show the art. Yeah. Shall we see? Yeah. 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 <laughs>
I really, I, I, I would love for you to talk through, you know, these, these specific panels that sort of sit in between the chapters and sort of what your approach was and the coloring and also just, you know, sort of what, what these, what these panels do. These were not in our script. These were things right. that you, this was a way for you to bridge our chapters. I'd love to hear you talk about that. Well, it's really interesting. I think when you're writing a middle grade book or when you're writing a book for any young audience, I think the key is balancing what's going on inside them and what's going on outside of them. Mm -hmm. And in your script, there was so much, even when it wasn't written overtly, I feel like I could sense that there was so much emotion going on beneath the surface, but it's hard logistically when you're making a graphic novel to, to take the time to explore the inner world of these children. And I think our editors suggested like, oh, why don't we just put caption boxes and like just describe what they're feeling? And I was like, no, that's not Tegan and Sarah. That's not you. <laughs> you know, you two in this book aren't the kind of kids to just like write a journal entry and explain how you're feeling. It's like being a twin. And I know because I'm also a twin is about this like, I don't know, this shared space between you and your twin, how much feels combative, how much feels emotional, how tight knit you are. And so finally, I just had the idea where I was like, why don't we just go inside their minds? And why don't in between every chapter of the book, Tegan and Sarah can talk to each other in their internal world, just as a way to like, check in on how they're feeling and to help yeah, flesh out what's going on outside of just school and family and homework and really show just how complex kids can be and how different you two are. Um, I think I didn't get this as much because I'm not an identical twin, I'm a fraternal twin. And I'm sure you got it much more is just being grouped together um, as like one unit. And I felt like part of the goal of the internal sequences too was to help differentiate that you both were going through things at different times and at different paces, right? Mm -hmm. And then yes. I, it's, it's so beautiful. Like it's, it's, it's such an interesting experience, like having written it and then seen these, like to have you define, okay, this is Tegan and this is Sarah. And the, this is the different colors that we're going to use for right. you know, them. And, and to see those interstitial moments, like it was so helpful because you're right. There's so much emotion that goes into the story that kind of would get lost. I think if we just had dialogue and like, so like right. the way those to describe it, it's so funny. Like I feel very realized maybe because you're a twin and you understand how often we're grouped together. And like, I think you totally. just did a beautiful job of, of, of identifying um, our differences. I'd like to also just shout out Ashley's cat and just because I saw a cat on the pages and so oh, I'd like to shout out, just like to shout out Ashley's cat who is also making an appearance on this um, interview and you know what just lean into it don't feel bad I just think I'm in fact if you just want to turn your camera towards that cat tree I'm fine with it I completely I completely support you I appreciate the the validation so much Sarah thank you as At you know they'll find like, any attention and they'll just you no know, but the shadow on your wall I was like is that, a, I was completely distracted. I was like, is that a shadow? Is that a cat? Is that a cat tree and a cat on the cat tree? I was like, I'm loving it. I'm living for this. I assume the cat in the book, you guys actually had a cat growing up. Three. We had three, you had cats. three cat. Why didn't you write that? We had, we had three, three cats because, because here's the thing, right? Like we're just like, we learned to not put too many too characters in. We were like, yeah, don't get them draw three, three cats. cats. <laughs> you know, like it's too many cats. In fact, you know, here's another, it's a funny you know, we, when we were writing the memoir, we write about our cats. And yeah. when we started adapting for the TV show, we made comments in the early outline and script stage for season one to, to, um, to Clea Duvall, who wrote, who wrote the scripts and was, uh, you know, an early, uh, uh, collaborator on the show with us, but she was like sending these, these beautiful scripts. And we're like, where's our cats? And she's like, you can't have cats on a TV show. Okay. Cats don't, they don't do what you want them to do. There's no, there's continuity issues. Like you can't have cats. And I was like, it's like not even our story anymore. I don't even understand. Our house was filled with cats. Like it just, you know, and, and I'm allergic to cats. And so my favorite thing was to say like my mom, you know, I actually think that this is such a beautiful thing. Like I would have, I would have lived in one of those bubbles with like an asthma machine before getting rid of my cats. Like I just, yeah. you know, there was no way once I discovered that I was allergic to cats, we weren't going to get rid of them. And my mom was kind of like, that's fine. So like, I was just like completely allergic for my whole, <laughs> for my whole, you know, gr growing up, I used to say we were like living in a pet store, you know, just too bad. Oh my God. 
I want to, um, I'm, I'm happy to throw back to you, Ashley, you said you had some other questions and I mean, we could just do this forever. I mean, I could just ask Tilly 50,000 questions about the book, but I want to get your perspective as well. <laughs> of course. I mean, you're, you're all having an amazing conversation, um, that I am simply, a, a delighted spectator, but thinking about what you were talking about, um, I'm sort of taking it back to thinking of, uh, your memoir high school and you touched on it a little bit, but I'm curious about, um, the way that you approached this memoir for a different, like it's a different audience perhaps, and you're in a different age. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, um, that middle grade lens. I mean, as soon as we got the note that we were going to fictionalize it, it felt really exciting because, you know, there was an opportunity for us to, you know, do things like make us make this young Tegan and Sarah musicians way earlier than it actually happened. And, um, I also think it was really exciting for us to explore and kind of play in this world because, you know, we wanted to write something that if we had received, like if we had read it when we were 12 or 13 years old, it would have really affected us. Like, you know, we obviously cover some really important, you know, uh, like things that, that happen, like, you know, the Tegan and Sarah get their period and they get bras and their dad starts dating a new girlfriend. And like, there was, you know, there's some bullying and teasing and, yeah. you know, there's all these things that when we started junior high, if we'd had a story like this, actually not even when we started junior high, if we, when we were younger had read, this would probably have helped to prepare us. Like we didn't have a lot of conversations about these big things with my mom, which is not a slight of my mom. I just, you know, we were, um, you know, just kind of There's a funny only so much moms can do. Yeah. We're funny. On family your own at school. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it was, it was actually quite healing and exciting to like write the bra story and to, you know, write the period story and to like, to also like process some of the bullying and some of the tough, tougher friend dynamic stuff that we had. It was like, it's a very tame, very sweet version of all of those things happening, but it was, it was quite, it was, it was amazing. And I think for us, um, also because we're such avid graphic novel readers and and love this space we wanted to write something that would really resonate with the age group it's aimed at but also adults are going to read it and I think find it very funny and sweet and reminiscent of their growing up so we tried to pepper it with a lot of um references that I think people who are just in our age group or are reading along with their kids are going to really enjoy it like to me I think this is like a book I would be very I would be very proud to like promote to our audience and to an older audience as well you know I think also the you know for me coming out as as a gay person in my teenage years was so fraught you know it was really challenging time in the 1990s to not just figure out what my identity was but to sort of identify with um language around my identity that was really new in the 1990s. You know, the words that people were using back then were often being used in almost like scientific way. Like it was like homosexuals or, you know, if you did hear people talking about gay people, it was often not in a positive uh, context. And so one of the real joys of moving our story into a younger age and a more current time was that, I mean, it's sort of a fantasy, right? Like I'm, I'm in the book, Sarah, you know, starts to figure out her sexuality at exactly the time I was figuring out my sexuality in real life, but in a much gentler, safer, uh, more accepting environment. And so some of, you know, what happens in that story is pieced together through things that happened later and later in my life, or even just now I witness happening in my friends' lives who are teachers or who have kids who are figuring out that maybe they identify somewhere on the spectrum. And so it's like, it was very healing to sort of write this kind of, um, this really, I think a, hopefully a very positive, but still realistic and textured um, example of what it might be like for a kid to come out at a younger age while they're still in school. I feel like anyone who reads the book will be able to access that. And it's, it's amazing. There are so many more books now just about being gay I also have the similar feeling where I'm like if I was just a little bit younger it would have been so normal to just like see yeah. lesbians in books I mean yeah. shocking um shocking, shocking. Stuff. but it's it's amazing and I, I think what's great now about the like kind of tapestry of queer graphic novels and even queer middle grade graphic novels is like 
it's not just one thing like and it doesn't it doesn't reduce anyone down to like just a coming out story or like just this one kind of story arc it's it's finally we're getting closer to having i think the breadth of experiences um of like queer identity and yeah. and i love that that it's becoming yeah. more open to like a younger space like middle grade graphic novels are gener generally aimed at like 8 to 12 year olds mm -hmm. and I don't know. I knew I was gay when I was five. So I love the yeah. idea that that kids who are young can start to like experience this in a really safe way, you know, because and yeah. that's so cool that it was like I didn't realize it was such a healing experience for you guys to have this sort of option to kind of fictionalize and rework through things. Um, have your parents read the book? <laughs> my Well, it's really funny because you say that because my mom, who is, you know, really supportive and loves us yeah. but you know i think it was the the our high school memoir was really tough for her you know it's it's a it's a it's definitely a complicated time of of someone's life you know as a teenager but it was also complicated for my mom to be you know handling us all the all the complicated things that were going on in our lives when she read junior high she wrote i left it for her i was like going away for a week and i gave her like you know the big stack of yeah. pages and she um she loved it and she was like i think that this is a much you know more <laughs> realistic version of how you were when you were kids like i think she really resists this idea that we were like the more uh the more sort of complicated version that we presented in yeah. our memoir um she was like this feels a lot like more like how you guys were funny and sweet and you know all of these kinds of things so um she loves it she absolutely loves it i want to add to to what you were saying tilly i think um, I think what's been so neat, like obviously when when we decided or when we agreed to do this book, you know, I got a ton of books for this age group. And it's yeah. one of the things that we didn't have growing up was we were such huge readers. Like we loved reading. Like at like 10 and 11 years old, we were already reading way above, you know, our grade level and and books we shouldn't have been reading. Like at 12, we were reading like vampire or um uh interview with a vampire and Stephen <laughs> King and all these like, you know, like, but um but we loved books with teenage characters in them. And, yeah. and I think we were so hungry to see ourselves represented. And it's one of the things I get most excited about with this book, but even reading all the books for this age group is it's just really exciting to think that somebody that's like nine or 10 years old would read this and see stuff about, again, the getting your period or bra, your dad dating or some bullying at school or the queer part of the story or starting a band, any of these things. And it will give them ideas. It will give them like representation to look for, like to be prepared for what's going to happen. And, um, and I think that that's ended up being really exciting for me and really moving for me. Cause we've spent a lot of our adult life talking to to kids a little bit younger than us, like, you know, as we've been in, in our band setting. And yeah. it's really exciting to me to hopefully think that we'd be able to bestow some of the things we learned and experienced in a way that can be digestible to a younger audience. Because I, I think as much as things have changed and generationally things have gotten so much better, especially around the queer identity stuff, you know, kids still need, they're still surrounded by mostly straight culture. And so to have left of center kids like represented in this book, I, I I hope I hope it you know really maybe consoles and 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 makes kids feel seen you know totally. I was also really I think one of the many reasons I was drawn to your book so immediately is as a twin I was just kind of used to being a punchline. I felt like twins were never main characters. We were like and especially identical twins where they're even more just like there to like be like look they look the same and. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, but I'm a fraternal twin. We matter too. So I was like, I want to be in the joke. But to have to have twins, to have them both, to have you both be the main characters, um, felt really felt really special. And I feel like all the identities of every of all the characters throughout the book create such like a beautiful and honest tapestry of what life actually looks like. Um, and it's so yeah. cool I to like for it to be in Calgary and it to be, um, you know, so connected to where you both actually became people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we did. I think that like all the things that we went out with the intentions that we had when we even just started this journey of writing, yeah. specifically our memoir first, you know, we would tell people, oh, we're doing this because we're doing right. this because we want to tell a story about musicians that doesn't normally get told. We want to tell a story about queer girls that doesn't get told. And the things that ended up really surprising me in the experience, specifically of turning it into a TV show. Yeah. You just, you just kind of hit it on the head. Calgary 
I mean, people do not know where Calgary, most people do not know where Calgary really is or what it really is. And, you know, when for us, like be, being able to sort of like honor or like, I don't know, just like be able to show Calgary as this like wonderful place. Like it wasn't this like conservative town that people used to sort of like be like, oh, thank God you got out of there. Like, you know, this was a city, it's bigger than Portland. There's like um, over a million people that live there. We learned how to, we went to raves and punk shows and we, you know, I don't know. We like, we are who we are because of where we grew up and that, and I'm proud of that. And then also, and it really hit me when we did the TV show and we saw the twins, season and Rayleigh, who portray us on the TV show. When I saw them on screen together the first time, I just, I, I wept because I just thought like, I have never seen twins who I feel represent me or some version of the life I've had or as a twin. Like I just, I've like, you think just, Sarah's like out on the, on the trail right now, like talking about like justice for twins. Like she's <laughs> making it seem like it's like, but it's so funny to hear you say that, Tilly, because it, it is one of the things I talked about with my partner, Sophia, when she read the book and she was just yeah. like, it's so cool to see each twin getting equal space and, and having their own identity. And I think that that's like such a thing with kids, right? Like kids want to be seen, like they want to be understood. And I think you don't have to be a twin to read this graphic novel and like resonate. It's like, it's this, it's a concept as like, you can just have siblings or, or your friends that overshadow you. It's this idea that like, you need space to be you and to shine and be, and feel like yourself. So yeah, it's like the justice for twins tour continues um, with the graphic novel. It seems. I just think it's, it's such a perfect way to put it. It's like, I think a lot of identical twins, we feel like we have been misunderstood or the punchline or the joke or the weird thing. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's a wonderful way to show that from the outside, when you share so much, it's so hard for people to believe that inside you are different. And, yeah. and I think that that's a sort of like a larger narrative that we can probably apply to a lot of things in the world mm -hmm. and taking the time to get to know somebody really under the surface, get to know somebody whether they're an identical twin or they look totally different than you, I think is really, you know, it's like, it's a beautiful message. And it's something that all joking aside, I think has been part of, you know, our mission is to sort of go out and be like, just because we have a very similar face does not mean we have a similar brain, you know? Mm -hmm. I I don't know if we can top that. We might have to just close it out right on those two statements. Cause that was, that was- Tilly turns her camera off. She's like, and scene. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that's such a strong place to unfortunately close. I have so many questions still, so many things I'm curious about, but this was such a beautiful conversation and I'm really grateful to all three of you. Thank you so much um, for closing out our event and thank you to everyone who attended our middle grade magic this year. On behalf of School Library Journal and our sponsors, I hope you've enjoyed the day and all our amazing panels and um, thanks everyone. Thanks, Ashley.